Hey, welcome to Bifocal. Today is part of our business series, and we're going down the path of how I started my business. And today we have the owner of Storm Search Recruiting. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. Today we have John Yerkshot, owner of Storm Search Recruiting, and he's agreed to come in and kind of walk us through his journey of how he started his company. So, John, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I so appreciate it. Tell me, um, you've been in business now how long? Uh, we started the business November of 2016, so 20, about three and a half years. Three and a half years. Yes. So, tell me a little bit about. Who, Storm Search. Yeah, so Storm Search uh, was actually uh, kind of a, a unique name, and it was in a sense like a tribute to my father. Um, so I had been in the recruiting business before, and wanted the goal of hey someday to be able to work, you know, with my dad in some sort of capacity. And when I was growing up, uh, he was he started the Copley Youth Basketball Program, and our team was the Copley Storm. So kind of uh, paying tribute with hey, the, you know, storm search with the name and, um, you know, in short, we focus in executive recruiting. So we're placing um, mid to senior level executives all across the country in a variety of different verticals. We, we started in accounting and finance and now we're in all sorts of manufacturing, supply chain, IT. Um, for the most part, if you name it, you know, we, we probably do it. So how'd your dad feel when uh, you, you shared with him the, the name? He liked it. He liked it. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, which I, I like, a lot of people ask, so how did you come up with that name? And I like telling the story. And, um, you know, now, you know, looking back, uh, I've been working together for two years. It's It's been yeah. pretty awesome. I had no idea what how, how the name came about. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there was the, I, I remember I was in second or third grade and we were brainstorming ideas for our, our travel basketball team and he came up with that. And, um, yeah, so it's been, you know, ongoing for 25 years now and, you know, now we get to kind of relive those memories. Yeah. So you mentioned that uh, you've been in business for a couple of years now and uh, walk me through a little bit how you got started. I mean, were you in this business and... Kind of walk me through a little bit. Yeah, so I feel like uh, kind of crazy. Um, I feel like I'm I'm supposed to be in this business, and and I guess I'll tell you why. So I went to school to be a teacher. Uh, I was going to you know be the prototypical social studies teacher and coach basketball. I uh, went and got my master's in education and could not find a job anywhere. Um, so I started in. Uh, a golf business. So I was doing like a, in a marketing promotions, golf business, door to door sales, living in hotels, traveling the country. Uh, mm -hmm. It's kind of crazy. So ended up, uh, you know, meeting. Not what you went to school for. Not what I went to school for, but that I think set, set us up, uh, you know, for where we're at today. But uh, I ended up posting my resume on monster.com and for what was the difficulty in getting a teaching job? I, was I, it the time? Or what? I like to blame the time, but I probably, uh, you know, the, the 3.0 GPA and the no, um, you know, extracurriculars or anything like that probably didn't help me. You know, I think there was a lot of people that are, frankly, probably much better teachers than I would have been. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I guess it all worked out for yeah. a reason. Yeah. So I put my resume on Monster. Uh, the same day I get back on Monster and I add in the word recruiting to my resume. I, d I don't know why or how or anything uh, within an hour. What made you think to do that? Just, Were you going for those type of jobs? No, I, d I didn't even know really much about recruiting. I think I wanted to do some sort of sales job, um, but I, I didn't really know what I was getting into. So um, I don't know if you remember, but I interviewed here. Uh, actually, I interviewed with Concept. That was years ago. I, that was years ago. Uh, I had a uh, offer to, to work at a bank. I had an offer to do an inside sales job. And then I interviewed with some recruiting company that was a startup company and ended up taking the job. Couldn't tell you why. It felt, uh, it kind of felt too good. Now, to when be. you say startup, like how startup? Uh, they hadn't made their first dollar. 
So there was a parent company that was doing really well. Uh, and then there was um, the company I was going to work with, which was Direct Consulting Associates, um, was a startup company. There was two people in the company. Uh, they had some financial backers and kind of brought me on board. Um, I don't know why, because I didn't have the background, but maybe they trusted that, hey, this this kid will work so were really, they, really hard. Were you going to get a salary? Was it commission? It was. There was a salary. It was very heavy commission-based. But uh, I, I remember looking around the office and like, man, there's a lot of people here making a lot of money. I grew up super blue collar. Money wasn't important to me. It was, I want to spend time with my family. I want to watch sports, be involved in sports. Like those were my priorities at the time. Um, So I think it opened me up to a different world because I didn't know money could be feasible for somebody that, you know, kind of grew up blue collar. Yeah. Yeah. So this startup company was part of another company. Yes. So they were, they were an executive recruiting firm and then they ultimately started a, a different branch to do uh, like a, basically staffing, like temporary staffing business. What so, was the parent company? Uh, the parent company was Direct Recruiters. So it was a recruiting company. You yep. guys, the, the startup was going to do different form of re- different types of positions or what? Correct. Yeah. So instead of placing people in a direct hire permanent positions, we we're going to place people into temporary. Tempor- periods. Okay. Yep. All right. So you started there and that's your... Uh, is that kind of your well, your first job was this door to door golf stuff? But. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, started in you know this executive recruiting. Um, I remember getting going and um, had a you know pretty quick start, you know, and started to realize like, hey, this this could be, you know, this could be a lot of fun. Could maybe make a lot of money. I mean, it was working for you. It was working. It was working. It was uh, you know working crazy hours, but not because I had to, but because I wanted to, I mean, there's uh, it's, it's a lucrative business. And was it just cold calling companies? Like how'd you, how, where was your direction coming from? Yeah. So it was cold calling companies. So um, we had a great, like the, the leaders of the company uh, were awesome. I, I don't think I appreciated them uh, until I left and, you know, started storm search and realized wait a second, they've, they've maybe been through something similar and uh, some of the trials and tribulations that you go through. But yeah, there was, there was uh, you know, sort of a, a rough game plan of, hey, we want to target this particular industry. These are the, you know, hiring managers that we want to make phone calls to, to see if they need people. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was 80 phone calls a day, every day, five days a week, you know, making a bunch of calls on the weekends, nights, you know, everything to, yeah anything you could do to, to kind of get the business off the ground. You mentioned it was heavy commission. So that was that, was that an incentive? Were you, were you the type of guy that was driven by that, that commission side of it? Or was it the competition? Uh, uh, I would say is the competition. And I think that's probably still it today. I don't, I don't like to lose. I, you know, anytime I, I don't, win. I feel like I've been outworked. Somebody was more efficient. Somebody worked harder. Somebody had a better process. Somebody had a better relationship in those things. You know, it just bothers me. You know, in the, in the, the staffing business and recruiting, I mean, that's an old industry, right? That's been around a long time. You mentioned that you don't like to, to lose because if you lose, you feel like you were outworked. How big is that in your industry? Like, you guys, you're pretty much pulling from the same pool, right? It's who's better at getting to the pool, who's better at finding the people, and who's working harder to find. Is that pretty much how it works, do you that, think? That's it. I mean, the, there's, you know, the, the people are the people. There's only so many people, and I think it's uh, whoever's fastest, more committed. Um, and finding them. Is just likely going to win, Yeah. So now how long did you stay at this company? So I was with them, uh, it would have been May of 2012 through uh, October of 2016. So uh, about four years. And then that's when you, you left there to start Storm Search. Left and started Storm Search, yep. <clears throat> so what gave you the, I mean, was it like going so well for you that you said, hey, I I can do this on my own and make more money. I mean, what was the, what were you thinking? I, I think I was, I was, uh, I, so I've been thinking a lot about that knowing that, you know, we'd be having this conversation today and there's a couple of things that I go back to. I, I never thought, um, I don't think I was ever in a position where my driving thoughts were, I'm so good at this. I don't need anybody else. I think I was almost bored in the sense of, 
I would keep doing the same thing, maybe on a grander scale and keep building the business, but it was still the same thing. So a lot of the things- But what about moving up inside the company? Was that not attractive to you or- It was, but the, the way the company was set up, I mean, it was it was pretty clear that, you know, I, I may get, you know, more responsibility and title, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, it wasn't my company. I mean, the, the people that funded it and, and helped build it that's their company and they should reap the rewards of that. And they absolutely did. Um, I just felt like I was in a spot where I was like, man, I might be doing the same thing for, for a while. That's okay. But anybody that knows me, that's not me. I mean, so what were some of the, the thought processes, the steps in going through, I think I'm going to step out and do this. Was it a one month decision? Was it a six month decision? What that looked like? Yeah, it was it was pretty exhausting. I mean, we were we were doing well. We were making good money. When I say we, it's everything is you know my wife and I. Um, it's not my company. So you were married. Yep, yep. So I was married. We're doing well, um, but it it felt like. It, it was a year of convincing her. And I remember the, the first time having the conversation with her. Of so she wasn't on board right away. Absolutely not on board. Absolutely not on board. Um, saying like, hey, this is what I'm thinking, you know, about doing. And I think, you know, the first couple of conversations, oh, that'd be awesome. We get to do whatever we want. We're not going to have a boss. And then she's like, well, wait a second. We want to start a family. We have bills to pay. I'm working part time. How does this impact us? What if this doesn't work? And, and you know, it was uh, truly a year long conversation every single day, asking every single, you know, type of question from insurance to what if it doesn't work? Is there. If she wouldn't is. have, um, I won't say drug her feet, but if she wouldn't have <clears throat> raised questions, would you have started it much sooner or? Did you need some time as well? I needed. I needed her. Uh, still do. Um, you needed her support. I needed her to doubt me, in the sense that not that it was going to motivate me, but it made me think of things that I wasn't going to think of on my own. Yeah. Because if I walk out of here today and one of my buddies says, "Hey, do you want to go to Italy tomorrow for you know the next two weeks I'm in like I'm I'm a very much an impulse person very spontaneous so for her to be more methodical in formulating the foundation of the structure of the Isn't business. Isn't it funny how opposites yeah. attract and it and you needed it. I needed it. She probably needs some of your spontaneity. Yeah. Well, I know when I when I started my business uh, it was crucial that my wife was on board with me. And, uh, and I shared about it in, in an earlier show, but uh, interesting that your wife and you were not on the same page right, right away. So you took a year or so. What were some of the things that you, you had to walk through? Yeah, so I, I think um, <clears throat> I'm not one to do a lot of research. You know, I will trust my gut on a lot of things. Do and- you think that's... Uh, that's just kind of uh, typical for an entrepreneur. Yeah. Just go. Yeah, just go. And it was like. Make it up as I go and I'll bob and weave. Yeah. And and I had, uh, man, I like I had met other people in this business at conferences. And I'm like, man, if that guy can do it, I know I can do it. And uh, ironically, yeah. we were probably six months into this conversation. And I was uh, named a partner at my last firm. And I was invited to an ownership conference. So I was invited to an ownership conference down in Dallas. And the first question, the guy, uh, Jeff K, who happened to be the first person that I saw in this industry speak publicly and like excited me, his first question he said, he's like, so how many of you left your last company because you figured you could start your own business and do it better? And about half the room raised their hand. And I made note of those. Half- was yours halfway up? I wanted it to, but I, uh, I, I still wasn't ready. But I spent the next, you know, two days trying to meet all those people that raise their hands. Like, so man, what kind of money did you make your first year? Not, you know, are you rich, but yeah. can you, could, can could you, you support yourself? Yeah. Uh, you know, so it was uh, a lot of those conversations. And then, you know, walking out of there, like, man, like we can do this. Did you kind of feel that um, once you got that desire, um, it grabbed you? I, I could not yeah. stop thinking about it. Um, every year, the, the whole Yorkshot side of my family, all the guys in my family, you know, age 14 and over, 
go on a fishing trip in, in September, October for a week. We go way up north in Canada. Um, and this was the trip that I was going to decide, like, okay, you're doing this or not. So it just opened, you know, a huge account. We we're, you know, setting up to have our best year financially ever, both for the company. So your job's going well. Yeah, things were going great. Things were going great. Relationships were great. You know, the the... You know, the partners in the business could not have supported me any better, gave me... You all. weren't disgruntled. No, no. I mean, there was... I'm a very fiery person. Yeah. I imagine I'm not, you know, somebody that is necessarily fun to work with all the time because I'm super determined. Don't you think that's kind of typical of an entrepreneur too? <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Absolutely. You're always blazing a path. Yeah. But just to make sure that, I mean, you had a good job. You were making money, probably got along with the, the company and all yeah. of that. But you're still thinking I'm starting my business. Start so my business. So you're going on this trip. It's going on a trip, and uh, you know we're we're in a boat at, by 8 a.m. Mm-hmm. and you're on the boat till 8 p.m. So you're sitting in a boat with, you know, for the most part, you know, uh, immediate family and spending a couple of days on you know boat with my dad, having these conversations, and so he knows you're considering this. He knows it, and I think he also knows I can't necessarily control myself. So if I'm thinking I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And uh, by the time that trip was over, I knew that following Friday, um, I'm going to dive back into work. You know, these couple of days, and if I'm not feeling anything different emotionally, come Friday, I'm going to resign. So you had kind of come to grips. I'm going to do a, maybe a one last litmus test here or some type of uh, yeah confirmation. Absolutely. What was the final trigger for you? <clears throat> so I, I felt like um, I, I just, I wasn't, I never f- I shouldn't say I never. I felt like I had gotten to a point where I wasn't going to be satisfied or happy both at work and at home. Uh, I'm the type of person that if work is not going well, I, I very much can wear that on my sleeve at home. Whereas if work is going well, everything else seems to, to go well. Um, and I just, I wasn't necessarily just all that happy. And work was really good. We were making money. The company was growing. I had you know, all the autonomy in the world uh, from, from you know, the partners in the company. I something just, in here still was missing. Yeah, it just kind of something. I think that's a good way to put it. Something was missing. Yeah, yeah. Well, you mentioned that uh, once you kind of got on that thought process, it grabs you. Yeah. And, uh, and I, think that's, I think that's very true for, for entrepreneurs. It, it has you. But it's interesting, though, because, you know, a lot of people start a business, and it fails. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't remember exactly what the stats are, but something like 95% of the people who start a business fail year one, and then 85% of the ones remaining fail year two, and it keeps yep. going down. How, do you, how did you know it was for real? How did you know you weren't going to be that, that, that statistic that you were going to be the 90, one of the 95% that don't make it? Yeah. How did you know it just wasn't because you mentioned earlier you're you're spontaneous, right? I get something like how did you know? Or did you know? Mm-hmm. Um so I it depends on the day. You asked me that uh last week. I, I would say, Dan, we're gonna be out of business by next week. You asked me today, I was like, this is the best idea ever. Yeah. Um so I <clears throat> it it just depends. So when I went in and resigned, there was four partners, um, two of which did not talk to me, did not approach me. Uh, They're upset. Absolutely. It, from the time that I left, there was no conversation, no anything. Uh, my direct boss, um, you know, was almost seemed happy for me. Like, hey, you go live your dream. This is exciting. And then, uh, you know, the other partners said, I don't think I don't know that you're going to make it. So it was uh, very much, again, I don't like to fail. Um, When you gave that resignation and you hear those comments and you walk out the door, was that a little bit of an empty feeling? It was. It was because uh, I had a lot of really good relationships there. I was allowed to build a team with some people that became, you know, some of my, you know, really good friends. But I, I felt that I owed it to me because I don't know. I just would not have been satisfied long term. It, it was a matter of when, um, 
Yeah. You know, it, because I, I like to, I'm a self-starter. That's, that's who I am. I'm a hunter to the core. Um, I need to be fulfilled in a way that, you know, if, again, if, if I'm going home dissatisfied, I don't think that's fair to my family. Yeah. So, you, you know, know I, <clears throat> I remember, uh, when my kids were teenagers, I used to share with my daughter at the end of the day, when you go to bed at night, I shared with her there was a reason why the mirror was between her door and her bed. Because at the end of the day, you got to walk by and you got to look in the mirror and you got to be happy with who you see. Right? Absolutely. And that's kind of what you're saying. You know, things are going well at work, but I got to be happy with what I'm doing and I'm not sure that's going to fulfill me long term. And that was it. That was it. That was it. That was enough for you to say, hey, I'm going to start this. Yeah. And I, I didn't want to look back and <clears throat> my concern was, was almost, Hey, if I'm doing too well, if I'm making too much money, will that be even harder to walk away from? And why I always wonder, you know, knowing that, you know, my dad, somebody I'm extremely close with, uh, always told me that he regretted not being a teacher. He always said, I wish I would have been a teacher and mm -hmm. I didn't want to regret not knowing if I could do it or not. Um, when we were building our, our business, we were focused in healthcare IT, I was afforded the opportunity to start a new division and I failed. Like I was not good at that. I ended up taking over, you know, our healthcare division. We did extremely well right before, you know, I resigned. Um, and I didn't want, you know, not that that would have been my legacy, but it was in the back of my mind, like, okay, I'm over one. I, I need to, I need to fix this and, and make sure it works this time. Yeah. So um, you're a spont spontaneous type person, but this was a year in the making. Yes, it was. What was the trigger for your wife? Uh, probably tired of me asking about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I mean, would you find yourself, you're just yipping all the time about it? Yeah, all the time. That's all we talked about. Yeah. I mean, it was all we talked about. She was, she was against it. Um, I, I think less for the fact that, you know, I, I guess she won't say I didn't know that if you could do it because otherwise there's no point in, you know, fighting me on it, but we wanted to start a family. So this was going to be a very big time in our life. She was going to go back to work full time. I was going to have zero income. So she had, she had a life change through this then too. She had to make some changes. Absolutely. Yep. So she went to back, back to work full time. She was working some overtime. She was funding the family. We had saved a little bit of money. Um, that, hey, we have six months to close a deal. And if we close a deal, that, depending on how big that is, that will That'll buy us more time. take another couple months. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. When you started, what was the finance? Did, like, did you go, and you don't need to share your finances, but did you go through the, the math that said, hey, I got X amount of time, I got to make a sale, if I do, I'm probably going to make this amount of money, so that will buy me another time. Did you did you have that, you know, how mapped out was that? Or was it just kind of, yeah, I think I can do this and that? Yeah, yeah. yeah it was very <clears throat> mapped out. I mean, it was, you know, once I got her blessing, uh, I knew there was a lot of eyes on me. So it was, you know, at that point, it became less about, okay, let's prove people wrong. Let's build something special here. It became more about, I have a family support, this this has to work. So I knew if I could close five deals at an average of $15,000 a piece, we could make $75,000, that would buy us another year. You could, you could get by on that. Yep. So five deals, how comfortable were you that you could do that? I mean, you'd been in the industry, so you knew what it would take to do that. Yeah. How comfortable were you with that? Well, I, uh, I learned a lot about my faith in God through this, these next, you know, three and a half years through today. So it was, um, I, I knew I could do it. I was the best recruiter in the world. Nobody could stop me. I had that. I was running my own business. I was, you know, the big man on campus. Uh, and I learned very, very quickly. I'm not as good as I thought I was. So I was, we were about two months in. And we had a bunch of money uh, saved aside for basically, hey, we're, we have six months to make this happen. Got a cushion. Yep. So we were two months in, and I was uh, just about every day, 
I'm, I'm laying on the couch, take him, you know, I had the, the most walked dog in the neighborhood, like three walks a day, just clearing my head. Like, what am I doing? Like, how many times were you home during those periods? And you're thinking, man, my wife's out working and I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, a lot. I, I did that. You know, my kids were 12, 10 and eight. And I remember being down in the basement and they're going off, they're coming down. Hey, see you, dad. Goodbye. You know, and they got their backpacks and they yeah. got a day and they got an agenda. And then an hour later, my wife's coming down. Hey, Dan, I'll see you. I'm going up to school to be involved with this, with the kids or whatever. And I'm by myself and I'm, there were times I'm thinking, they all got things to do and I don't <laughs> know what I'm doing. Yeah. I mean, did you go through that? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that, that messes uh, with you a lot. I mean, there was, there was times where you're almost, you know, paralyzed and thought and it's, you can't, I couldn't get myself to work. I mean, you know, those times may be an hour or two, but the confidence that you had, it's like, I don't know if I have that anymore. Gone. Yeah. And I felt, uh, you know, I always felt that, Hey, my last company would, would hire me back as I was a, a did you a, have a fallback plan? I, I felt confident I could find another job doing what I was doing because I had had, yeah. had some success. Um, and you had your teacher. You could fall back being a teacher. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> right? I had my degrees. But I was. <laughs> my concern was, man, if this didn't work, I'd just go be somewhat unsatisfied somewhere else. So, yeah. so it wasn't a, a stable fallback <laughs> plan for you. No, absolutely not. But it was, uh, you know, alarm went off every day at 530. I was in my office, which was a bedroom with a desk by six o'clock. And I stayed in there till six o'clock with the uh, exception of a couple of walks making calls, 300 calls a day. Yeah. So was it difficult calling into companies uh, it, being a brand new company? Yeah, it was because people would say, well, how long have you guys been in business? Uh, and they'd say, well, uh, about 15 days. And they, I'm sure in their minds are thinking, well, so why would we work with you guys? And it was, I mean, I was very, very. Yeah, but you had a website, I'm assuming. Yep, had a website. I mean, we we looked official. Um, you know, I'm, you know, there was just one of us, but it was. Uh, I was very, very real with people, saying like, "Hey, listen, um, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, fake it till I make it," and say I, I work with, you know, thousands of companies, and this is who we are, and this is what we do, and we're the best ever. It was. This is what you're getting. I mean, you're getting a guy that has, uh, you know, family to support, starting their business. Here's my previous story. Um, this is why I think and, and know I'll be successful. Worst case, I don't find somebody for you. But if you give me an opportunity, you know, I, I think you'll see that I will. And, and kind of really in that industry, there was no skin off their back to give you an opportunity. No. Nope. Just a little extra paperwork. Um, but it was, you know, it, I, I knew nothing about accounting and finance. And I started in accounting and finance. And I learned very, very quickly that not only did I know I knew nothing, uh, but everybody else knew I knew nothing. So there was a huge, huge learning curve. Uh, and then, you know, so November went by, December went by, January went by, and it was like, okay, I'm, I've got three months left. And it was... Uh, and your goal was what, six months? Six months. I needed you to make a deal. needed a sale. <clears throat> yep. Yep. So I ended up... Uh, I, I would work out in the middle of the day. So I figured out a, a new routine because I had to get my mind off of, um, you know, basically the, the job. Uh, so I went one day and it was like middle of February. I'm three and a half months in and I've, you know, working out. And I'm sure there's a lot of people, you know, thinking I'm some guy without a job. Uh, who's this guy at 11 a.m. in the gym? Uh, and there was days where I felt like I didn't have a job. Yeah. Uh, and I remember driving home. And I get a phone call from my client. <clears throat> I had just had a final interview. I was about to make my first deal. And I see that number calling me. And my heart is racing. And I pick up, you know, I answer on my phone. It connects to my Bluetooth. I start talking for a second. It reconnects to my headphones that are in my gym bag and my trunk. I, got, I lost the call. I'm like, what are the odds of this? So it was like I was that close to funding another. It was a big deals but a fun so pulling off the side of the roads and yeah stuff. what are you doing panic man i was uh i was over by leatherman road right at the bottom of the dip right i'll never forget where i was um so i pull into a driveway um turn off my bluetooth i call uh, the lady we ended up we make the deal 
And I was like, I couldn't even breathe. I remember. And you're how long into the company now? I was three and a half months in. So you're ahead of schedule. Yep. Yep. So I had 75 days left. Uh, and I remember walking in my house. My wife was home. She was sitting at the kitchen table. She was eating lunch. And we're walking in and, um, you know, we had been married, I don't know, four years at the time. So I don't know that she acknowledged me. I'm sure it was a quick, <laughs> what's up? And she wasn't facing me. And I remember walking up behind her like putting my arm around her and just like bawling. Like I couldn't even talk. Like we yep. made it like it's is real. And then, uh, it's like, man, we can really do this. Like if we close this position, which is a super technical role at a big time fortune 250 company, we can do this anywhere. And then the next, uh, you know, 60, well, 45 days, I think I closed another 12 deals had already doubled my income from the previous year and was like, this this is happening. This is happening. You know, I think it's uh, <clears throat> important to point out, not only are you calling into companies, you're calling into candidates. Yeah. You're interviewing. You're doing a lot. I mean, you're on the phone all day long because you can't make a sale unless you got some candidates lined up, right? Yep. Both sides of everything. You know, there was no research department um, that was me working – minimum, minimum 12 hour days. I would not let myself start, you know, after six and would not stop before six, always phone calls in the evening. Uh, and is because that is, that was the best to talk to candidates. Yep. Cause everybody's working and specifically where we were focusing, that was their, their busy season. So pe those people were working 12 hour days. Was January. it difficult on that side, the candidate side as well, being a young company? <laughs> Uh, less so, uh, cause I, I always felt like I could sell, um, like I could paint a picture of, Hey, this opportunity is better. Here's why. Um, it was, uh, the challenge was getting credibility from companies because the companies you want to work with are the companies everybody wants to work with. So they're being inundated with phone calls and requests for, to work with recruiting firms. And then here comes the guy that is working out of his guest bedroom, uh, that's been in business for three weeks. And did says, you have to get set out. up as like approved vendors and stuff? Yep. So people are probably hesitant to even go through the paperwork with you. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, I, I trusted that, Hey, I'd be able to build a good enough relationship that people would say, yeah, let's, let's give this guy a shot. He seems like he knows what he's doing. Once I started to get those, um, we caught fire and, you know, we had a great May of 2017, Remember, I took the month of June off, and I went fishing and did a lot of nothing. I was like, let's open an office. So opened our first office. Uh, there was three of us cramped in a— uh, So you were hiring somebody now? Yep. Hired two guys. Basically said, in a roundabout way, man, we've got uh, we've got six months. Uh, we have to make it. It's a month-to-month -month lease. Um, let's do it. Yeah. I, I remember I started my business. A guy wanted a year lease. And I said, hey, I, that's here, a long time. Here's my situation. I, I remember telling him, in three months, I'm either going to be out of business or your place is going to be too small or you're willing to rent. And he went month to month. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's a good deal. Now, people you hired, were these people you knew or were you taking risks? Uh, so one guy uh, I wanted to hire actually my previous company, but I wasn't, uh, they, they weren't as on board with him as I was. So I ended up hiring him. Uh, and then another guy was actually one of Caitlin's friends. Um, those guys are not with us today, but if it wasn't for what they did, yeah. um, you know, in their first six months, again, we just wouldn't be where we're at today. So, so how, I'm going to get a little personal here because yeah. I think it's important for people listening. When you start a business, I mean, you mentioned now you're making some pretty good money. Yeah. But now you're bringing people on. The expenses start going through the roof now. Mm -hmm. You got an office you got to furnish. Probably got, I don't know if you're working mm -hmm. off of cell phones or you're yep. bringing in phones now. I don't know how you're doing that, but you got to pay people now. How was it all managing all of that? And what was the intensity level as an owner now that you're starting to bring real expenses in? Yeah, it was, uh, it was scary. Um, <clears throat> not, we had the money to do it for, you know, a six month time frame, And, you know, I, I knew we would be in that position. And I, and I felt like because of the previous months that we just had, if these two didn't work out, we would be okay, because I could just do it on my own again. Uh, but the expenses add up. And I felt I became a micromanager 
because I needed them to work out so much yeah. more. And You're watching everything they do. Everything. And it's not good enough. No, no. You see somebody send a text during the day and you're thinking like, dude, we've got money to make. Like, what are you, what are you yeah. doing? Like that, your tax isn't paying the insurance. It's not paying the rent. It's not paying your payroll taxes, not paying yeah. But when you were an employer or employee, you didn't really think a whole lot of that. No, absolutely And you see not. it rampant through the office and everyone's doing it. I mean, you don't think much of it. No, I figure, hey, if I hit my numbers, I'm good, you know, and. But the hat's different now. You're yes. wearing a hat different. Yes. So it's amazing when you look at it through the employer eyes. Yep. Yeah. And at that time, um, my wife's seven months pregnant. She's due in two months, which means I'm going to maybe take some time off. I found out very quickly I didn't have time to take any time off. Uh, but yeah, it felt very, very different. I've since been able to, you know, we've built an awesome team. We have like the best people ever, obviously able to, Hire my dad, which is a dream come true. Hire my best friend. So your dad's working with you. My now. dad's working for me uh, or with me. Um, yeah, that was uh, that was an experience. Does he have a shirt that says "Coach"? Uh, he does not. He wants to be coach, but he knows I'm coach, and he doesn't like it. <laughs> so, uh, but that was an experience, man. Like, so all these different things are piling up. Like, I'm a sales guy. I sell. I manage people. I lead people. That's what I think I do best. All of a sudden, I've got to deal with payroll and commissions and insurance and personnel issues, bills and everything. I'm like, man, that is not me. So I got to the point where I asked my dad to come on board. He told me no for about six months. I'm like, he's like, man, I'm, at the time, he's 57 years old, uh, doesn't have a four year degree. He's like, if this doesn't work, what's going to happen? You know, were you were you asking him to leave a job? Yep. Yeah. So and he had, you know, a couple of years back, he'd been laid off, had trouble finding a job again. At that time, 55 years old, no degree. That's tough. So it was, you know, that much more skin in the game. Like, okay, this isn't just me and Caitlin and our daughter, Gianna. This is me, Caitlin, Gianna, mom, dad. How does this impact my sisters, my family, our relationship, all of those things. So a lot of, a lot more, uh, touch points and data points and, uh, yeah. Yeah. So your dad, he did. He, he came on. So he came on. He started February of 2018. Okay. And he does what? So uh, he was brought on to basically handle everything outside of recruiting. So all of the business type of stuff. Um, it was funny. I, I got in the office one morning. It was a Thursday or Friday. And I'll never forget. I got in there like 3.15 in the morning. Couldn't sleep. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you remember those days. No, oh, yeah. So I'm in the office, like 3.15, and grab my coffee. I'm walking in, see the light on, and my first thing is, who left the light on? I'm the one paying these utilities, and I'm immediately <laughs> going to that. And I go in there, and my dad is mopping the floors. And I'm like, what are you doing here? And he's like, what are you doing here? And he's like, I can't sleep either. And it was like, okay, like we're on the same page. So oh, man. he ended up... Uh, transitioning and becoming a recruiter. Now he's one of our, uh, top, Oh really? Top well, this producers. is like a 180 for him. Yeah. Yeah. So he's super disciplined. So that's, I remember waking up every Saturday morning, I'd go downstairs. Uh, he'd be paying bills. He'd have his checkbook, his list of bills. Like he's super processed, super structured. So I thought I'm not processed. I'm not structured. I need somebody like him yeah. in the business. So he's put us in a, in a situation where we document everything. So when we hire people, now we have handbooks, we have templates, we have processes for everything to allow people to get up to speed quicker. And that's because of him. He's like, you can't just keep being good in your own head. Like, what if you could share that knowledge, document that knowledge? So it was, I think it's important, you know, being in business just isn't being good at your craft. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of other stuff that goes with it. There's a lot of stuff that goes with it. A lot it. of stuff that people don't, they, they just don't know or they don't understand if they haven't experienced it when you talk about a handbook you got to have one yeah yeah and those are little things i mean a, a handbook an internet bill um security for your laptops yeah. just so many little things yeah. and we've been able to build build a really strong team that focuses in different areas to allow us to operate, you know, seamlessly and basically set the foundation where we can continue to grow. Faster. How many employees do you have now? So there's currently 15 of us. Oh man, 
So you've had very good growth in a very short period of time. Uh, there's been good growth. Yeah, we uh, we probably grew too quick initially. Um, and I think that's because we were making a bunch of money and things were good and let's keep going. Let's be the, the best recruiting firm ever. And then, uh, you know, God has a way of reminding you that uh, you're not as good as you think you are. So, um, <clears throat> you know, we kind of refocused and we worked on, hey, let's not grow by adding people. Let's grow by developing people, putting people in positions, identifying what it is that they do best, and let's put them in those spots. So what do you mean by that? Like, what would be an example? So, uh, you know, my, my dad, for example, um, he is a great people person, you know, you give him tasks, he'll knock them out. So, hey, work on, you know, these two or three searches, no, get them done. With that said, he's not the best at documentation. So we have people that help him document things, help him with research. So we just allow him to be on the phone more. Uh, we have people that are more, you know, operate more tasks oriented, you know, Hey, how do we put you in a position where you need to be, you know, complete a certain series of tasks each week? What are those? How do we establish those? How do we complete those? So you, if I understand you correctly, you kind of dissected your business and said, Hey, instead of one person doing all of this, let's break this up into two or three and let's have people who are very good at that. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's allowed us, you know, we will double our revenue or come close to it this year with the same amount of people, um, you know, as last year. Yeah. Interesting. What were some of the biggest hurdles? Um, I, I would say the, the biggest me, frankly, I think I can either help the business or hurt the business. And I've found a way to do both quite often. Um, I think when I'm trusting, you know, my faith um, to get us through the day, get us through the quarter of the month, the year, we're in a really, really good spot. When I become caught up in how fast we're growing and how much potential money we're making and how much people can travel and live this awesome lifestyle. And it becomes more about, um, you know, what each individual gets to accomplish. I think that's, that's when we struggle. And I, and I know I'm the, the catalyst for, you know, how our business operates. And when we become more faith focused, doing things for the right reason and for each other, and then whatever happens, happens, that's when, you know, our business, you know, has started to explode. You mentioned several times you made references to faith and God and are you, I'm, I'm assuming you're you're a faithful person you you believe in God and sh can you share a little bit of that and how that has kind of helped you in the workplace yeah yeah um, so I was uh, it, this is 100% my wife um, you know before my wife I prayed when I was you know super hungover that if God if you help me get past this I'll never drink again. God, can you hope the Cavs win this next game? Yep, the Browns win. Uh, you know, whatever it was, that was that was my. He didn't answer a lot of those. Uh, he no, I think he's busy on Sundays. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, you know, that was my relationship with God, and you know, when I met Caitlin, it changed very, very much. Like she enjoyed going to church. I'm like, what is? What do you mean you like going to church? Like, tell me more about this. And I found, uh, you know, over time that I became, the more I learned, the more I knew, the more I read, the more at peace I was with whatever the outcome was, because I knew at the end of the day, if I could go home and see my wife and my little girl, and I feel fulfilled, not with, did we close a deal today, but with how I'm living my life, like things were going to be okay. Mm -hmm. What was, um, was there a certain thing you read or a certain thing you came to understand that you said, I, I need to change my life this way. I need to accept the Lord. Was there, was there something specific? No, I mean, I'm, we were in church um, first, goodness, we had just started dating. So this would have been like 2011 in January. And I remember uh, our pastor, um, John Stahl, uh, you know, he would always, you know, have an invitation, you know, at the end of the, the service. And for whatever reason, like, I just felt like that was my time. And I remember tapping Caitlin on her shoulder, like, let's go forward. And she like looked at me like, this is an altar call. 
Yeah. Invitation, come down front. Yeah. And she like looked at me like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah. And so I, I don't know. There wasn't like a build up. It was just, you kind of just felt, okay, now's time to maybe live life a little differently. Yeah. And I think that was one of the, you know, the number of things that set us up in a position that, you know, maybe I wasn't supposed to get that teaching job. Maybe I was supposed to be in the golf business for a little while to meet Caitlin. What in the heck made me go back online and change my resume to have recruiting to get me in this business? Why would I get invited to that owner's conference in, you know, Dallas the May before? Um, you know, there was just so many things that mm -hmm. happened that it was like, okay, those were very, yeah. very intentional. I think it's it's very important, and, and I share that faith. And, and I know for me, um, I mean, you work hard, right? I, I give everything, you give everything. But there's this understanding in the back of your mind that if it works, great. If it doesn't, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I have, my purpose is a little bit bigger here, right? Absolutely. And I think, I think for me, <clears throat> that was always my center point. And that was always my safety net, if you will. It's like, hey, if it doesn't work out, it's okay. Yeah. You know, it's it's this big of where what I'm really here for. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't work out, if I'm going to trust God in good things, I got to trust God in some of the other things that maybe don't go my way. Yeah. And I'll just trust. And I, I agree. I think that in starting a business, that was uh, that was instrumental for me. And it's good to hear that 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 was a part part of your uh, your journey as well. Yeah. And when I think you just hit the nail on the head when it. When it becomes a hundred percent of your, when I mean, your life becomes work focused and me focused, and what can I do, you'll quickly find out that that's maybe not as satisfying, you know. And when your priorities change, your reasons, your purposes change, life becomes a lot easier, you know. And I think that's that was a big takeaway, yeah. something that I've learned and struggle with. It's continue to struggle with. I mean, we could have the best week ever this week, and at some point this week, I'll be thinking to myself, like, man, like, you're a really good business owner. And then <laughs> next week, things will fall apart. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're not that good. So yeah. you don't remember your priorities. So yeah, God and I, we, uh, he, he likes to toy with me a little bit. Yep. Oh, interesting. What kind of advice could you give somebody? There's somebody listening right now that's mm -hmm. Maybe they're just starting a business or they're thinking about starting a business. What could you share? Yeah, I, I would say that, you know, the the biggest, um, you know, words of advice is, you know, I think complacency can be your best friend in a sense. And I, I say that from, you know, there's a lot of people that become complacent and there's a lot of, you know, entrepreneurs break in when they have that fire and they can hit that five-year barrier when, you know, now their business kind of becomes safe. And there's a lot of people that maybe take for granted some of the relationships that they have, you know, in the world. And if you could, you know, break into whatever industry it is and realize that, hey, I could capitalize on people thinking that, you know, their business and their relationships are okay. And I could maybe become the the new kid in town and, um, you, you know, become a star. I think that's, that's you know, incredible urgency is, you know, absolutely the, the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I would say the second is have a plan, a backup plan. Know that, you know, um, you know, the worst case scenario likely will happen and prepare for that. You know, we, we were prepared for that. And I think that set us up that, you know, we knew what each sale or deal or, you know, whatever it is meant to us and how much more time that would buy us. So to have that plan um, and several backup plans, I think is, is, critical yeah now that um now that you're a business owner you've been at this several years now and you obviously have a viable business and it's real for you today yeah. and it's providing a livelihood not only for you but for other people your dad included how important is it for someone who's planning to start a business to understand as they're going into it although it's it has all of these perks and everything there's a lot of other things to it that it's not what it's cracked up to be. Yeah. It's um, it's the hardest thing I think I've ever, I, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, you know, and like we were talking <clears throat> before we kicked off, like if somebody said, hey, would you do this again? A lot of 
me is saying probably not. But then again, like, man, like to build it in like the small wins, how exciting they were. It was awesome. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, there's uh, when when we first started, you know, I'm coming down for dinner at 630 and we're eating dinner at 630. And that was kind of our plan because we didn't have any business. And now I could be on the phone every single night and my little girl's running around she wants to play we you know she walks around now and she'll say dad work you know because she knows i'm working and there's times where that's cute and times where it's like man like yeah why am i on the phone it's with not this a 40 person? hour job oh my goodness no and it's, it's not eight to five no we're you know if if i'm not dropping her off i'm in the office by 6 30 i'm leaving at four so i can hang out with my little girl for a little bit and then I'm on, uh, you know, it's, it, yeah, my goodness. If it was eight to five and we could live, yeah, you know, build something eight to five, that would be awesome. But it's, uh, it's, it's so hard. It just, it is so hard. You know, are you thinking out much beyond today or are you kind of, uh, do you take it day by day? How do you operate your business? If we, if we close a deal, today, I'll probably think like, you know, more long term. But uh, as soon as we're out of here, I'm thinking, Man, I just spent an hour with Dan. I'm behind. Like, what do what do we have to do? So, uh, but yeah. yeah, I mean, it's uh, definitely time you know, is money when yeah. you when you're the owner. Time is money, and it's not so much because it's money in your pocket. I get I got responsibilities with 15 people now, and a landlord, and I got some vendors, and I got yeah, I got things. Absolutely, and I think my urgency is I want my team to make money because if my team is making money, they're happy and they're living hopefully the lifestyle that we said this business could provide. So there's a huge sense of urgency that if they're doing well, the business will take care of itself. But that's uh, that's kind of our focus. Yep. They're looking to you to make decisions. Yep. Yeah. Well, hey, I want to thank you for for swinging by today. I know yeah. uh, being a being a business owner, taking time is is uh, is critical. It's money, and uh, so I want to thank you for that. I think you shared some pretty important things, you know. And I I, I guess I just want to highlight a couple of those because I think they were very good. One was you needed your wife's support, and that didn't come overnight, and that was some time. And I think it's important to point out, and, and I understand that per, firsthand. And I think it's important for somebody who's out there that, um, you know, if you're going to start a business, it's a family decision if you're married mm -hmm. and you got, you know, and you did that. I think the other thing that you pointed out that was, that was pretty impressive too, is you realize that starting this business and running this business on my own probably wasn't going to go anywhere. And it wasn't until you really accepted God and faith and where that is and where my importance is that really started to help you personally run the business, deal with the ups and downs, mm -hmm. right, and kind of know what the bigger plan is. Um, so you mentioned some very good things. I want to want to thank you for that. Yeah. And uh, thank you for taking the time. I wish you the best. And uh, anybody out there, how can people find your company? Uh, so you can go, uh, go on our website, uh, www.stormrecruit.com. We're all over LinkedIn, uh, Storm Search, uh, Facebook. Um, but yeah, we're out Look there. Look you up. Yes, sir. You're, you're out there. Well, hey, thank you for coming. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Um, John Yorkshot with Storm Recruit, um, Storm Search, Storm, Storm Search. Search Executive Recruiting. And uh, look them up. And if you have a need, please look them up. And thank you for tuning in.